So the daughter called me to do the funeral Mas, the, for the for for her father. Mustana can pick a simu kwamba nikaweze kufanya utaratibu wa mazishi kwa ajili ya baba yake. And then I I told her, you know, I have prayed for your father to experience God. Nilikamwambia kwamba mimi niliombea baba yako kwamba akahisi Mungu. At that time she was with her sister. Na wakati ule alikuwa na, na dada yake. And I said, are you willing that I pray for both of you on the phone? Akamuuliza kwamba unajisikia kwamba nikaweze kuomba pamoja nanyi katika simu ya rununu? So she put the phone on speaker mode. Akaweka speaker uh, simu yake kwa loud speaker. And then the both of both of them can hear my prayer. Ili kwamba wote wawili wakaweze kusikia maombi yake. After the prayer I asked them what they experienced. Nilipomaliza kuomba tu kwa simu nikawauliza mmejisikia aje? They said they felt the body floating, very light floating. Wakasema kwamba walisikia mili yao ikikuja kuwa mipezi na mipezi zaidi. So I told them this is the work of God. Nikamwambia kwamba hii hakika ni kazi ya Mungu. Are you willing to believe in Jesus? Mnajisikia kwamba mnaweza kuamini Yesu? And I let both of them believe in Jesus. Nikawaelekeza tu kwa simu nikawaelekeza kumwamini Yesu. And they were later baptized in my church. Na wakawa wanafuatilia kwamba waje kanisani. So I have done things like this all the time. Kwa hivyo mambo kama haya ninayofanya mara kwa mara. And one time I prayed for a drug addict. Ah siku moja nikaombea mtu ambaye anatumia madawa za kulevya. After the prayer he said, Baada ya maombi akasema, When you pray for me if I feel more comfort than I took drugs. Anasema kwamba unaponiombea ninajisikia nikiwa na amani kuliko vile huwa ninajisikia nikikunywa madawa yangu hii. So the presence of God can give greater comfort to his body. Kwa hivyo uwepo wa Mungu unaweza kupeana furaha iliyotimilivu kwa ajili ya mili zako. When you love God all the time, ukimpenda Mungu kila wakati, you also feel comfort to your body. Pia utajisikia kwamba mwili wako una furaha na unashangilia. And you can sleep better too. Na ukilala aulani ile kulala ya kungangana. Do you believe that? Naamini mambo hayo? Hallelujah. Amen. But many people believe that. Watu wengi waamini kwamba but they don't live in that the presence of God. Hawataki kuishi katika uwepo wa Mungu. I hope that you all stay in the presence of God all the time. Ninatamani kwamba vile mko hapa nyinyi wote muishi katika uwepo wa Mungu. And our passage is Isaiah 61:1 to 3. Sehemu nyingine ya Biblia ni Isaiah 61 mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu. Isaiah 61 mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu. There is says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Sasa kwamba roho wa Mungu yu juu yangu. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Maana Bwana amenitia mafuta kwa nikahubiri habari njema kwa walio maskini. But he also sent me to heal the broken hearted. Na pia amenituma kutangaza ku kutangaza uhuru kwa walio katika ufungo. To, to proclaim freedom for the captives. Kutangaza uhuru kwa walio fungwa to comfort all who mourn kufarichi wote wanaolia and the oil of gladness instead of mourning mm. oil of gladness instead of mourning na with the verse oil of gladness instead oh. of mourning oh mafuta ya furaha badala ya kilio so here it talks about holy spirit gives us the power to preach the gospel hapa biblia inasema kwamba Roho wa Mungu utupatia nguvu kwa ajili ya kuibiri nchili and also gives people in the healing. Anaopatia pia uponyaji wa mioyo ndani to heal the broken hearted. Kuponya walio na mioyo iliyovunjika. To comfort all who mourn. Kuwafariji wale wanaomboleza and to give them the oil of gladness instead of na kuwapatia mafuta ya furaha badala ya kilio that we all can live in joy and peace kwamba sisi wote tukaweze kuishi katika furaha na amani na, na, na kushangilia now many christians live in sadness watu wengi wa kristo hawa mnaona hawa wanakaanga wamehuzunika or burdens na misiko mizito and even some minister sometimes a burden with the ministry na watu wengine wanakuwa na miziko hata kwa ajili ya huduma now we first need to believe that that ministry belongs to the Lord. Lazima tuamini kwamba huduma ni wa Mungu. When we have the strong presence of God, God will bless our ministry. Tunapokuwa kwamba tuko katika uwepo wa Mungu ulio na nguvu, Mungu atabariki huduma zetu. We don't have to worry about the work of God. Hatusaidi kujali na kutokujua habari ya huduma wa Mungu. When we submit to God and have a close relationship with him. Tunapochilia kwa Mungu na kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na yeye. He guide us how to do ministry better. Yeye atatuelekeza vile tutafanya huduma kwa njia iliyo bora. 
And then your ministry will go higher and higher. Na huduma wako utaende juu na kupanuka zaidi. But when we worry, lakini tunapokuwa kwamba tunakaa tunakuhuzunika na kushangaa, we won't have much strength. Hatuna nguvu zilio sawa. But some people say it's hard for me to have joy. Watu wengine wanasema kwamba ni vigumu mimi nikuwa na furaha. Then you need the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. Sasa unahitaji roho wa Mungu na uwepo wa Mungu to heal your heart. Kwa ajili ya kuponya moyo wako. And to comfort your heart. Na kufariji moyo wako. So that you are totally free. Kwamba uwe ulie na uhuru ulio wa kweli. When I pray every day, napoomba kila wakati. I seek total freedom. Ninachisikia nikiwa huru kweli kweli. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. <laughs> Now know this how I pray it's like from the spirit. Sasa hii anapoomba anaomba kutoka kwa roho. It's not just talking. Sio tu kupika kelele. It's flowing from my spirit. Ni kutiririka kutoka kwa roho wa Bwana. Hallelujah. Oh yes. It's crying out from the spirit. Ni kulia kutoka ndani ya Hallelujah. I hope you try to do this. Nafikiria kwamba mtajaribu kufanya mambo yao. Kujisikia tu. Kujisikia tu ndani ya Yesu nafurahi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not speaking. Sio kuongea. It's flowing from the spirit. Ni roho ya Mungu kutiririka kutoka kwa moyo. Hallelujah. Kwa hiyo ndio anakuwa na furaha na kushangilia kwa Bwana. Now, sometimes people just pray with the mind, just with the mouth. Saingine watu wengi wanaomba tu mdomo kelele. I'm praying from the spirit. Na mimi ninaomba kutoka na roho. The whole spirit rises to God. Roho wa Mungu anainuka juu kwa ajili ya Mungu. And all the burdens burdens will go away. Na hiyo misigo yote inakuondokea. And I continue to live in the joy of the Lord. Sasa nitaanza kusikukana na kufurahia katika uwepo wa Mungu. And the freedom of God. Na na uhuru wa Mungu. So when we pray for people too many people will be comforted. Napo kwamba tunaombea watu watu wengi wanafarijika. I've seen big men tall men cry when I pray for them. wengi watu wanono watu warefu wakiingia tunapoomba. So God's presence is very real. Kwa hivyo uwepo wa Mungu ni wa kweli kabisa. And the Bible also said miracles will follow those who believe in him. Na Biblia husema pia ishara sitaambatana na wote waaminio. Mark chapter 16 Matayo Mariko 16 beginning of verse 15 to 20 kuanzia kuanzia mstari wa 15 hadi 20 ishara sitaambatana na wote waaminio In verse 15 it says that Jesus told us to go to the whole world and preach to the whole creation Katika mstari Mariko 16 mstari wa 15 naambia kwamba mtakapo enenda katika dunia yote and he who believes and is baptized shall be saved Yote atakao amini na kupatizwa huyo ataokoka And then verse 17 miracles will follow those who believe. Namzari wa 17 kwamba ishara na miujiza sitaambatana na wote waaminio. And what kind of miracles? Ishara gani? They will cast out demons in Jesus name. Watakemea mapepo kwa jina la Yesu. They lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. Watawekelea mikono kwa ajili ya wagonjwa na watapokea vya njema. And then verse 20. Shrim mstari wa 20. The God perform miracles to follow them. Mungu atatenda ishara kwa ajili ya kuwafuata. To verify the word of God. Kwa ajili ya kutafautisha kazi ya Mungu. So the miracles are to prove that that the word of God is true. Kwa ajili hiyo miujiza ni kudhihirisha kwamba neno la Mungu ni la kweli. Now according to this verse who should lay hand on people? Kulingana na mstari huu ni nani aliye na uwezo wa kuwekelea mikono juu ya wagonjwa? They'll lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed. Tunyonyesha mikono juu ya wagonjwa na watapona. So who would do that? Nani atafanya hiyo? Is it just the pastors? Haya swali kwamba hii ni yawahubiri peke yao? Because it says miracles will follow those who believe. Maana Biblia inasema kwamba ishara na miujiza sitaambatana na wote waaminio. So it talks about every person. Kwa hivyo aisemi tu at bishop peke yake ama wachungaji wote wanaoamini. When you lay hands on the sick they will be healed. Unapoweka mikono juu ya wagonjwa bora wewe ni muamini atapona. If you train your members, unapofundisha washirika wako, take care of their sins and demons, kujiachilia kutoka kwa dhambi na miziko zao, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit, na kujaswa na nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu, and then train them to pray for people, na uwafundishe kuombea watu, first pray for each other, muombeane nyinyi kwa wenyewe kwa wenyewe, and then go out to pray for other people, na muende nje kwa ajili ya kuombea watu wengine, you be able to bring many people to Jesus, mtaleta watu wengi kwa ajili ya Yesu. And 
You also hear miracles in your church all the time. Na pia kanisani mwako utashuhudia miujiza kila wakati. And everyone who comes to the church will be excited. Na kila mtu atakayokuja kanisani hata lala, hata sinzia, atakuwa na furaha. They will say God is very real. Wanasema kwamba Mungu wa hakika ni wa kweli. God can do wonderful things here. Mungu anaweza kufanya mambo makubwa mahali hapa. And they'll be excited when they come to church. Na watu watafurahia wanapokuwa kanisani. And then they can care for the people who come to the church. Na watajali watu wengine wale watakaoingia kanisani. And pray for them. Na kuwaompea to comfort them to kuwapatia changamoto kuwapatia rehimizo or to strengthen strengthen the faith. Ama kuwatia um, kuatia changamoto kwa ajili ya imani yao kukua and also help them to be strong anointing of the holy spirit na kuatia moyo kwamba wawe na uwepo wa Mungu ulio wa juu in my ministry i always train people to take care of their sins and problems kwa hiyo katika huduma wangu kanisani huwa nafundisha watu kujiachilia kutoka kwa dhambi zao and train people to have a strong anointing of the holy spirit na kuwafundisha kuwa na nguvu za Mungu zilio na nguvu zaidi and pray for other people na kuombea watu wengine and i see miracles all the time na ninaona miujiza ikitendeka kanisani kila wakati wowote Not only when I pray for people. Sio tu wakati naombea watu. But when the members pray for other people. Hata washiriki wanapoombea watu wengine. Then evangelism will be done to the, your neighborhood. Sasa uinjilisi utafanyika watu watafikiwa kwa wale walio majirani wenu. With a strong presence of God and with power. Na katika nguvu nyingi zilizo la Mungu na uwezo mkuu. And many people will be comforted. Na watu wengi watafarajika ndani ya maisha yao. Many people in problems will be changed. Watu wengi watakuwa kwamba wanaweza kubadilika kutoka kwa dhambi. Now I have heard testimonies like this. Nimesikia ushuhuda kama huu. When people really follow God. Watu wanapomfuata Yesu kabisa. The farmers found that, that in the field the crops have you know have more protection haya sikia hii kwamba wakati watu wanapomfuata muu kwa njia ukamilivu hata mimea yao katika mashamba yao inakuwa iko sawa and there were less rats in the field rats rats mouse big mouse rats oh, oh sasa zile panya za kukula mimea zinakuwa kwamba haziko tena God can bless our work Mungu anakuwa kwamba amebariki kazi zenu and bless your yourself and your church members Sasa Mungu anabariki wewe pamoja na washiriki na hata watu walio karibu na wewe And this whole area Na hii area yote hii hapa watu watakuwa kwamba amebarikiwa And your country Hata nchi ya Kenya pia itakuwa kwamba imebarikiwa Now I'm going to tell you two bible verses that will talk about that in the evangelism is not just with word but also with the power of the holy spirit and miracles Unakwambia vifumba vingine kwamba uinjilisi sio kwa maneno tu na mdomo bali ni kwa uwezo na nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu. Romans 15 verses 18 to 19. Warumi 15 mstari wa 18 hadi wa 19. Warumi 15 mstari wa 18 hadi wa 19. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I've said and done by the power of signs and miracles through the power of the Spirit. Sitakuwa na shauku kwa kusema neno lolote isipokuwa lile ambalo limenenwa na Kristo kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu na ishara na miujiza kupitia kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu wa Bwana. Here Paul talk about that. But what he has done to lead the Gentiles to obey God. Hapa Paul anazungumzia kwa yale ambayo amefanya juu ya kuongoza watu kwa uh, watu wa mataifa kwa kumfuata Mungu by what he has said and what he has done kwa kile amesikia kile amefanya na kile ameona by the power of signs or miracles kwa ajili ya ishara ya miujiza na, na miu, kwa, kwa ajili ya nguvu za ishara ya miujiza through the power of the spirit kupitia kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu so here paul talks about it's not just by word that he preached to god hapa paul anasema kwamba hasungumuzi kwa maneno ya mdomo ya pere pere tu but also with signs and miracles and power of the holy spirit bali ni kwa ishara na miujiza kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu but many people today they didn't realize that we should do evangelism not just with with word but also with miracles and the holy spirit kile watu wengi wakati huo watambui kwamba hawastahili kufanya tu kazi ya Mungu kwa mdomo bali ni kwa ajili ya kuwa uwepo, na uwepo wa Mungu Roho Mtakatifu wa Bwana ili ishara na miujiza siambatane pamoja na wao. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 2 to 5. Wakorinto wa kwanza mbili Wakorinto wa kwanza mstari wa pili Wakorinto wa kwanza mbili mstari wa pili hadi wa tano. 
wa Korinto wa kwanza mbili mstari wa pili hadi wa tano There it says that for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Sitamani kujua neno lingine lolote ndani yenu bali Kristo aliyesulubishwa. Now some people will say well then Paul only know Jesus and him crucified. Sasa watu wengine wanasema kwamba Paulo anajua tu Kristo na kusulubishwa kwake. And some people will say well he doesn't know the Holy Spirit then. Na watu wengine wanasema kwamba hajui nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. But then in verse 4 it says. Na mstari wa 4 anasema And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Na anasema kwamba katika mambo yangu from where? Okay, verse 4. Mstari mstari wa 4. Verse 4 on. Oho. And then verse 5 too. I'll, I'll say verse 5 and then Okay, mstari wa 4 unasema sio kwa maneno tu kwa maubiri yangu ambao itawashawishi maneno ya kibinadamu na hekima bali dirisho la Roho Mtakatifu kwa nguvu na kwa uwezo wake. And then in verse 5 says that that your faith should not be in the wisdom of man but in the power of God. Na kwa msaada wa tano unasema kwamba ili imani yenu isiwe kwa maneno tu bali kwa hekima itokanayo na Mungu. So Paul said here that his his preaching is not just with human wisdom with words of human wisdom. Paul na Paul anasema kwamba kwa maubiri yake sio kwa maneno tu bali hata sio kwa hekima yake tu. But in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power. Bali ni kwa ajili ya dirisho ya Roho Mtakatifu na nguvu that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. Kwamba imani yenu isiwe kwa ajili ya mambo ya watu bali kwa nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. So here Paul said that in his preaching it's not just with word. Paul anasema kwamba kwa maubiri yake sio kwa maneno matupu tu. But with the power of the Holy Spirit. Bali ni kwa uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu. And we saw that Jesus and the disciples they all perform miracles. Naona kwamba Yesu pamoja na wanafunzi wote walichudia miujiza katika uwezo wa Roho Mtakatifu. Now there are some people that there are no more miracles today. Kuna watu wengine huwa wanakana kufikiria kwamba siku hizi hakuna miujiza na ishara. But in Mark chapter 16 which I we read earlier 15 verse 15 to 20. Lakini Mariko 16 mstari wa 15 hadi 20 wale tulisoma. There it says that the gospel will be preached to the whole creation. Blenesema kwamba injili itahubiriwa kwa kila kiumbe. And then he who believes will have miracles. Na yeye atakao amini ataambatana na ishara. They will cast out demons in Jesus name and lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. Watakemea mapepo kwa jina la Yesu na watawekelea mikono juu ya wagonjwa na watapokea vya njema. So the Bible tell Jesus tell us that The miracles will go to the end of the world when the gospel is being preached. Yes, Yesu akasema kwamba injili itahubiriwa hadi dunia yote nayo miujiza itaambatana na watu. Jesus did not say the miracles will stop. Yesu hakusema kwamba ati miujiza ya kukemea mapepo ati itafika mahali ikome. Jesus said the miracles will follow Christians to the end of the world when they preach the gospel to all creation. Yesu alisema kwamba miujiza itaambatana na watu wakati wote ambao bado jili inahubiriwa. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Korinto wa kwanza 12, there it talks about spiritual gifts. Inasema juu ya gharama za za Roho Mtakatifu, including prophecy and Una, healing. Unabii uponyaji that and then Paul did not say they will stop. Paulo hakusema kwamba Biblia hii kusema kwamba hizi zitakoma. So the Bible never said that miracles will stop. Biblia hii kusema kwamba miujiza na ishara zitakoma. It's some people misunderstanding. Watu wengi ni kukosa tu kuelewa mambo ya Biblia. Actually there are testimonies of miracles all over the world. Kuna ushuhuda wa miujiza ya Yesu karibu ulimwenguni mwote. And some people say well maybe miracles will follow but then There won't be people who have the gifts of spirit of uh, of healing and uh, miracles. Watu wengine wanasema kwamba labda miujiza itakoma na tutakuwa na watu ambao watakuwa wanatembea katika uwepo wa Roho Mtakatifu. But we do see today too when lakini, people pray much. Lakini siku hizi tunaona kwamba tunapoomba sana they will have miracles and healing. Ishara na miujiza na uponyaji zinaonekana. So 
Now this method of evangelism he, he, the ratio, the evangelism, that we pray for people to experience peace and joy and love no, watu, wana afra, amani, nafra, and inner healing na, wanani, burdens go away ziko inaondokea, healing unapatikana, and all this has to have the strong presence of God. Anyone with faith would have miracles. But the amount of miracles would depend on the relationship of the person with God. When a person has weak relationship with God, there will be fewer miracles. When people have a strong relationship with God, there will be many miracles. Now, for myself, 95% of the people I pray for, Asilimia tisaini na tano ya watu wale huwa anawekea mikono. 95% would experience the Holy Spirit when I pray for them. 95%, yani asilimia tisaini na tano. 5% tutu yuwa inakosa. Lakini asilimia tisaini na tano. Uwona miujisa kifanyika. When they open the heart to God. Wanapo fungua miyo yao kwa jili ya buwa. And you too, you can pursue a stronger presence of God. Na wewe pia unaweza kushudia uwezo mkuu wa mungu. Now here I talk about this evangelism method. Please write it down. The first is build up relationship with people. Listen to them. Respond to their needs and their feelings. Now this is very important in our relationship. Maana sana katika uusiano. Many Christians have a tendency to teach. Have a tendency to teach people. Wakristo wa wengi wanatabia ya kufundisha. Actually teaching doesn't make people, doesn't draw people to God. Mafundisho, haya sikia hii. Mafundisho tu upeke yake, hayusongesi watu karibu na mungu. When people are ready for teaching, we can teach. But when people are not ready yet, and listen to them and respond to their needs and their feelings, it will attract more people to Jesus. I use an illustration. If someone has serious sickness, or has serious family problem. And you hear about the problem. And then you say, don't worry, pray to God. He might feel that you're not caring about his needs. But if you say, it must be a difficult time for you. That you might worry about your sickness. Kwa hivyo, nina, chukua mziko kwa njini magonjwa yako. Or when your family members have problems. Ama kama jamii yako yuko na shida. You'll be unhappy. Uh, Uitakuwa huna furaha. Now, it doesn't mean I want them to continue to be unhappy. Yuna manisha kwa basitaki kwa mba waendele kwa katika hiyo hali. But I realize that in that situation. Nina tambua kwa mba katika hiyo hali yao. He could have unhappiness. Atakuwa kwa mba dani ya mwe wake hana furaha. Or burdens and worries. Akona miziko na akona mawazo. So let me ask you. Waja ni kuulize. If you have some serious problem. Kama ukona shida ambao ni shida kubwa sana. Like for instance as a pastor. Kama we mchungaji. And you have some difficulties. Na ukona matatizo hapa na pale. And then. Another person will tell you, pray to God, trust in God. Or another person comes to you and says, Pastor, I know it's difficult for you. You have put in much effort in, uh, in the ministry. And now you face difficulties. Now let me ask you, which one, which response to the pastor will make the pastor feel happier? Aya, sasa, anauliza. Kwa hili amekuambia tu kwamba, 
Amini Mungu na uombe. Na yule amekwambia kwamba pasta ninajua kwamba uko na shida, umekuwa na matatizo ingawaje umeweka moyo wako kwa ajili ya kazi ya Mungu. Kwa hiyo watu wawili, ni nani utaona kwamba anakujali? They say they say the second person who was who was share yeah, right. you on okay. what you are going through. Yeah. So when we hear people's problem, tunaposikia watu wakiwa na shida, don't go into teaching. Ah, uh, usiende kuwafundisha. Listen to them. Wasikize hao watu and empathize with their feelings. Na uwaurumie katika mawazo yao. Feel their feelings. Hata wewe ujisikie kwamba pia wewe una una mzigo kwa ajili ya hiyo shida. And just say to ourselves. Na ujisungumzie wewe mwenyewe. If I were that person. Kama mimi ndio yule mwenye nilio na shida huyu. How would I feel? Ningejisikiaje? And then respond to the feelings of the person. Na uitikie kulingana na shida na matatizo ya huyu mtu. Now this is important for your daily life too. Hii pia ni ya muhimu kwa ajili ya maisha yako ya kila siku. For instance your child comes home and uh, uh, his uh, his school grace is not very good. Sasa mtoto wake anakuja nyumbani ajisikii mzuri na hayuko na amani. And then you say you did not study well. Unamwambia kwamba wewe hujasoma vizuri wewe. You have to study harder. Wewe unastahili usome na nguvu. You have to work harder. Unastahili usome na nguvu wewe. Now would the child be very happy? Sasa huyo mtoto atajenga kweli. But we might have seen the child has did try. Unaona kwamba mtoto kweli hajafanya vizuri. And he's not doing so well. Hajafanya vizuri lakini amejaribu. So we can say yeah you did try. Na unamwambia kwamba eh mtoto umejaribu. And so now you ha don't have good grace you will be unhappy. Eh sasa ukiwa katika hiyo hali hatafurahia. I'll help you. Nitakusaidia. And you do better and better. Kwamba kesho ufanye vizuri na bora zaidi. Now this way people will feel comforted. Sasa huyo mtoto anajisikia kwamba anaf amefarijika. And then also responding to your wife too. Na pia unapoongea na bibi. When your wife says oh it's so hard to take care of the children. Oh mkaka anakwambia oh ni vigumu kuangalia watoto. And then very often the wife said the husband always teach me what to do. Na naye bibi anasema kwamba huyu mwanaume kila wakati tu anatakanga kunifundisha kile kitu cha kufanya. But if we say to the wife Lakini tunaambia bibi I know you have taken care of been taking care of the children for a whole day. Ya kwamba mama eh unajua umekuwa na kazi ngumu umeshughulika na watoto siku yote. It's very hard work. Najua kwamba hii kazi mama sio sio rahisi. I appreciate you. Kwa hivyo ninashukuru kwa hii kazi unafanya. I know you're unhappy when they don't obey you. Najua kwamba saa nyingine watoto wanapokusumbua huwa wanakasirika. That way now which way would the wife feel better? Sasa ni njia gani ambayo mke ataona kwamba anaisikia mzuri? They say the, the the second one. Right. So it's very important for us all. Kwa hivyo ina muhimu kwetu sisi pia especially pastors and people who serve God. Sana sana wachungaji na wale watu ambao wanatumika kwa madhibao wanapomtumikia Mungu. To realize that it's very important that we feel the feelings of people. Kutambua hiyo kwamba unajisikia ukichukua mawazo ya watu and respond to people's feeling with comfort. Na kuitikia mahitaji yao kwa njia ya kuwafariji. So this first step of evangelism is listen to people. Hii hatua ya kwanza sasa sikia. Listen to the needs and the feelings. Sikia maoni ya watu na vile wanavyofikiria. And respond to the needs and feelings. Na uitikie kulingana na mahitaji yao. And you can say something like this. Na unasema kitu kama hii. And he, you can say after you. Na sasa yeye yeah, atazungumza kwa kizungu. Mimi nitasema kwa ki, kwa Kiswahili na nyinyi nikishasema mtarudia nyuma yangu. Okay, so you can say oh it must be difficult for you. Unasema kwamba inaweza kuwa ni ngumu kwako. Inaweza kuwa ni ngumu kwako. I know you feel unhappy. Ninajua kwamba haujafurahia. Ninajua kwamba haujafurahia. I know some people make you feel unhappy. Unajua kwamba watu wengine wanakufanya kukasirika. Unajua watu wengine wanakufanya. I know the situation is hard for you. Unajua kwamba hali hii ni ngumu kwako. Watu wengine amuongei. I care about you. Ninakujali. Ninakujali. Hey. And I'm willing to do anything to help you. Na ninaenda kufanya lolote kukusaidia wewe. Ninaenda kufanya lolote kukusaidia. So these are things we can say to people. Haya ni mambo ambayo tunaweza kuzungumza kwa watu. To make them feel accepted. Kwamba wajisikie kwamba pia wao wamekubalika. And understood. Na wameeleweka. And then number 2. Nadhani pili. We can share 
some of our similar experiences. Sasa tunaweza kushiriki pamoja nao yale mambo ambayo sisi pia kama watumishi tumeyapitia. Or some people similar experience. Ah uh, hata ushuhuda wa watu wengine and then they got help from God. Sasa wanapata usaidizi kutoka kwa Mungu. Or when we pray for people they experience the help from God. Ama tunapoombea watu wanapata usaidizi kutoka kwa Mungu. And then number 3, la tatu sasa, we ask the person are you willing that I pray for you? Sasa unajisikia kwamba bwana mtaro tunaweza kuomba pamoja na wewe? Yes. That, that the blessings of God will come to you. Kwamba uwepo wa Mungu kakujilie juu yako. Yes. And then when the person is open, naye mtu huyo akiwa ako wazi na moyo wake umekubali, then you will tell them, Sasa utamwambia, God loves you very much. Unamwambia kwamba Mungu anakupenda sana. God wants to bless you. Mungu anahitaji kukubariki. So open your heart to God. Kwa hivyo fungua moyo wako kwa Mungu. Hunger for God. Uwe na tamanio kwa Mungu and relax. Na utulie kabisa. And believe that God wants to help you. Na uamini kwamba Mungu anataka kukubariki. So you help the person to open the heart to God. Sasa unasaidia mtu huyu kufungua moyo kwa Mungu. And then you yourself open your heart to God. Na wewe pia si unaambia mtu na wewe umemkasia tu macho. So if you pray every day to experience the Holy Spirit. Unapoomba kila wakati kwa ajili ya kushuhudia nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. And lead the church members to pray together much. Na kuongoza washiriki wa kanisa kuomba kwa Mungu sana. And to practice praying for people. Na kwa ajili ya kufanya zoezi la kuombea watu. Then you get used to the presence of God. Na sasa unatumika katika uwepo wa Mungu. And then when you pray for this person, unapoomba mtu huyu, you yourself would believe that God loves you. Wewe mwenyewe umaamini kwamba Mungu anakupenda. God wants to bless us. Mungu anataka kutubariki. And use us to bless the person. Anataka kututumia kubariki watu. So in a prayer don't talk too much. Kwa hivyo kwa kuomba usipike kelele na kuongea mambo mengi. It's not the prayer of the mouth. Sio kwamba tu ni kelele ya mdomo. But our spirit will ascend to God. Ni roho iliyo miminwa kwa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God mambo kama hayo. Mungu ni mwema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now notice how I use my voice. Sasa hivi ndivyo anayetumia sauti yake. It's like the voice came from my belly. Sasa sauti inatoka ndani ya chemichemi ya moyo. Also my heart ascend to God. Moyo wake unamsongea Mungu karibu. Hallelujah. Kitu kama hiyo. Oh yes. Hallelujah. So I pray from the spirit. Oh, thank you Jesus. Sante Yesu. Now when I talk, ninapoongea, the voice will be coming out from my belly. Sauti inatoka ndani ya moyo. Hallelujah. Hey, inatoka ndani ya moyo. Praise the Lord. Sio yakelele. And then after the prayer, baada ya maombi, you say this. Nasema hivi. Please say it after him. Sasa nitasema, atasema na mimi nitasema na nyinyi mtasema nyuma yangu. Yeah. You will say, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Sasa unaambia mtu huyu, funika macho. Ume umeshuhudia neno lolote katika maombi. Tell them the same. Mwole nyuma wanja usiye nyumbani. Funika macho. Sasa unamwambia funika macho. Funika macho. Watu waongee nyuma yangu tafadhali. Unamwambia funika macho. Funika macho. Umeshuhudia neno lolote wakati wa maombi? Umeshuhudia neno lolote wakati wa maombi. Now why do I ask people to close their eyes? Kwa nini waulize wafunike macho? Because if they open their eyes they will be distracted. Wakati umefunua macho unaweza kuona hata pusi zikipita huko nje. So I want them to stay in the prayer mode. Kwa hivyo wanataka ubaki katika hali ya kimaombi. So continue to close your eyes and concentrate in Jesus. Kwa hivyo unaendelea kufunika macho na kumtegemea Bwana Yesu. Why do I ask them what they experienced? Kwa nini waulize kile ambao wameshuhudia? They, they might have experienced the work of God. Wanaweza kuwa wameshuhudia nguvu za Mungu. If, they, we, we, kazi ya if Mungu, we don't ask them, na tusipo wauliza, they might forget about it. What does how do wanaona tu ni mambo ya kawaida? They just say I don't know why I cry at that time. Wanasema kwamba hata mimi sijui leo nilikuwa nalia nini. And when the peace go uh, when the peace you know gradually goes away, they would forget about the peace they have experienced. Wakati amani imetoka ndani yao, watasahau habari ambayo ilipokuwepo wakati walikuwa na so, na amani ndani ya mioyo. So it's important to ask them right then. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri kuwauliza wakati huo huo. But many people are afraid to ask. Lakini watu wengi huwa wanaogopa kuuliza. They will say what if they haven't experienced anything? Sasa kama hawajaona chochote. Then I'll feel very bad. Sasa nitakuwa kwamba nimeaibika mimi. 
If the person says I haven't experienced anything, uh, you can say, well, pay attention to your heart and your body. If you experience any peace, burdens go away, comfort to the body, because some people sometimes don't know what to look for. And then, if the person says, I still haven't experienced anything, then you say, it doesn't matter. When you continue to pray to God, He will continue to bless you. So we need to accept that sometimes people don't accept, experience the Holy Spirit. But if they experience the work of God, then we we'll use the Bible verses I gave you and said, wow, the peace is from Jesus. Jesus took away your burdens. Jesus comfort your soul. Mungu moyo wako. Heal your broken heartedness. Ame, ame, ame moyo wako and give you joy. Na ame fura. And also make your body feel comfort. Na ame wako or very light. Ame uwe mwepezi. Or some people feel like floating. Watu wengine wa ni kama wana, 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 wana so that's like in heaven. So you quote these Bible verses to them. And then you say, please write this down. Jesus has blessed you like this. Yesu Do you want Jesus to continue bless you? Yesu If the person is willing, then you explain about Jesus dying on the cross. How God loves us and wants to save us. And lead them to, to believe, uh, to say, you know, pray together to accept Jesus as their Savior. And then after the prayer, you ask them, have you sincerely prayed this prayer? Have you sincerely asked Jesus to forgive you and give you eternal life? If he says yes, then you congratulate him and say when you sincerely Repent and trust in Jesus. Now you are a Christian. Now Sasa you are have... a Christian. And then also teach them how to follow God. Okay, so this is the evangelism method. And then if the person is a Christian, after the person experiences the Holy Spirit, you can say, you know, you can carry the power of God to bless people. Do you want to be used by God to bless people? That way, you can raise up Christians to serve God. I have raised up people to, to become ministers and missionaries after I pray for them. Okay, right now I want to demonstrate this with one man and one woman. Anyone want to be willing to come out Sasa tunataka kufanya zoezi kwa mama mmoja na mzee mmoja. Mama mmoja anayejisikia kwamba uh, aje na mzee mmoja. Okay, anyone one Hole. man and one woman I demonstrate this method of Hole. evangelism. Hole. Hole. Mama mmoja na mzee mmoja. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And a woman? Itaino mwana waje. Okay. You, you stand over there. You come over there. Please. Mama uh, You don't have to tell her. You don't have to tell her. Whoever wants to come. Come on. Mama, anybody here? Come, come, come. Come here. Come. Song up. Okay. Now, now we will skip the part of uh, uh, talking at this point because that will take time. 
atitaongea kwa sababu itachukua muda so we just come to the point of the prayer tunakuja tu kwa sehemu ambayo ni ya maombi Mama sitawembe hilo sitawembe sitawembe So open your heart to God. Sasa fungueni mioyo yenu kwa ajili ya Mungu. Hunger for God. Muwe na tamanio kwa Mungu. Please close your eyes. Sasa funika macho timba timoni mkana wazi. Close your eyes. Okay? And then and I tell you uh, open your heart to God and appreciate God. Ah, fungua moyo wako na umshukuru Bwana. And then for myself I would believe that God is blessing me right now. Ndio toko subira mnyasaye. Ya nami na ngati kamsiesi. God is with us now. Yesaya alinde for the same. And I open my heart to love God. Na nafungua moyo wangu kwa ya kumpenda Bwana. And believe that God is loving me. Na kuamini kwamba Mungu ananipenda. And God is blessing them. Na Mungu anawabariki pia. So I have my spirit ascend to God. Sasa ninaachilia roho yangu inapanda kwa Mungu. And then I will lay hand on them. And then I will lay hand on them. Sasa nitawekelea mikono kwa ajili yao. But I will ask them is it okay that I lay my hand on you? Uh, I'll ask them is it okay for me to lay my hand? Nitawauliza ungependa nikuwekelee mkono? Kama mwiko na kutia kwa mkono mpapa. Is it okay? Yeah, she okay. said it's okay. 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 And then I would really reach out to God. Sasa nitamfikia Mungu. And believe God is working here. Na kusuamini kwamba Mungu anafanya kazi hapa. And then I lay hand. Sasa naweka mikono yangu. Now, if you can feel the presence of God. Unapojisikia uwezo wa uwepo wa Mungu. Before you lay hand that is the best. Kabla hauja wekelea mikono juu yao hiyo ni bora kuliko. Now please stand up. Ah sasa anasema tusimame sisi wote. You can have your eyes open. Sasa unaweza kuacha macho yako yamefunguka. Stay in a prayer condition. Lakini ubaki katika hali ambayo ni ya kimaombi. That you'll be praying to God in your heart, not with voice. Utakuwa unaomba Mungu ndani ya moyo wako sio kwa maneno ya kelele. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Fungua moyo wako kwa ajili ya Mungu na usiombe kwa sauti. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Now notice my prayer. It's very simple. Una unatambua kwamba maombi yake ni ya ni rahisi sana. And I don't speak very fast. Aongee ni kama anataka kukimbia ama yule anamfukuzwa na mvua. Just reach out my heart to God. Anafungua tu moyo wake kwa ajili ya Mungu. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Please bless this Father, this friend, come to him and take away his burdens. Come, Lord Jesus, to bless him. Bless him in his heart. Give him comfort. And bless his whole life. Thank you, Jesus. Now, When I pray for you, it's better that you don't speak. Uh, I'm saying in general. Anasema kwa ujumla kwamba anapokuombea usitamke maneno kwa kinywa. Tamka maneno ndani ya moyo wako. Try not to enter just a thinking mode. Yaani uingue tu katika hali ya kutafakari. But think of Jesus in front of us. Sasa uhisi kwamba Yesu ako mbele yako. Think of our spirit ascending to God. Ujisikie kwamba roho wa Mungu roho wako anainuka kwa ajili ya Bwana. Hallelujah. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I Santa Jesus. I worship you, Father. We love you. You are so wonderful. When you are jumping. Hallelujah. We need Jesus. Please open our hearts to accept you as our Savior, to be blessed by you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God loves us very much. God wants to bless us. Mungu God wants to help us. Mungu Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now please, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Mama wakati umekuwa tukiomba umehisi jambo lolote. Okay. Uh, what have you experienced? Can you speak? Can you speak louder, please? Uh, she says she had some power coming out of her, and then some some soft power coming into her. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, how do you feel in your heart? Sasa ndani moyo wako unasikiaje? She feels she has peace. Uh -huh. So that is God coming to bless you. That Jesus has give, given you peace. And Jesus has given you power. Do you feel, feel comfort over your body? Mm -hmm. So that is what Jesus said, that what the Bible said, that our body will rest secure. So God has blessed you like this. Do you want him to continue to bless you? Hallelujah, thank you. Now, I've uh, asked him first. Now, friend, have you experienced anything during the prayer? She, he has felt a lot of peace in, her, in his heart. He has felt peace. Peace. Yes. Peace. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus said. You know, peace he will give to Joy. us. Joy. Yeah. Now I saw, I see tears on your eyes too. So how are you feeling? So how are you feeling? Uh, he said he has been overloaded in his, in his heart, in his mind, but now he feels he's being released. Hallelujah. So Jesus took away your burdens. Uh, so you see how real God is. That he came to heal the broken heart. Now you have seen how God is real. How he blessed both of you. So are you willing to let Jesus bless your whole life? Yes. Yeah, very good. You know Jesus loves us so much. He's the son of God. And he came to the world. To die for our sins on the cross. To be punished for our sins. So we don't have to be punished. So we can have eternal life. Do you want Jesus to forgive your sins? So that you have eternal life. Can you follow me in a prayer? To ask Jesus to forgive you and give you eternal life. Now, if you sincerely pray this prayer, God will give you eternal life. Okay, so we'll pray now. Dear Jesus, you can say it together. Yes. We thank you that you have blessed us in the prayer. 
You have given us peace. You have healed our broken heart, uh, healed our, our burdens. And heal our hearts. And give us comfort. Thank you for your love. I know that you are a real God. I want, I want to accept Jesus as my Savior. I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. And I've sinned against other people. I have had anger. I have told lies. I've hurt people's feelings. Please forgive our sins. And wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. And give us eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Heavenly Father. I want to follow God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let me ask you, have you sincerely prayed this prayer? Yeah, very good. Then you are a child of God already. Congratulations. Are you willing to continue to follow Jesus? I can teach you a, a, a simple prayer. So you can pray after me. A simple prayer that you can remember. Because the prayer just now was too long, so I want to teach a simple prayer. And you too can teach new Christians and you can simple prayer. Okay? Now please close your eyes and say after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Please forgive my sins and give me eternal life. Thank you. Asante. I worship you, God. Please bless my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now this simple prayer is asking Jesus to forgive us and ask Jesus to give us eternal life and ask Jesus to bless us and thank God and love God. So you can say that every day. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, do you want to say anything more about you know how your heart feel? You know, I see that your tears came out. You want to say more? Ah. Can you speak louder? Amen. Praise the Lord. But what is this? He's saying, Praise the Lord. Okay. I would like to say. Uh, on his behalf, this day was so, so tough to him. But I want to thank God. Uh, he had a problem at home. Uh, the child is very sick. Alafu kuna yani mambo mengine hatu ya sisi kama familia. And there are things that they have not solved as a family. So it, it created a problem into my heart. Uh, therefore, I called the servants of God to come and pray with me. And when they came and prayed in the morning, I keep on thanking God because I did expect to be in this meeting today. I see myself being released because the, the burden that I had in my heart. I find that God is setting me free from the bondages. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless your child. We pray that God will heal your child. And your child too.
na mtoto wako pia. Now, at this point I like to pray for you. Wakati huu sasa tutapenda kuomba pamoja na Ali. Experience the Holy Spirit. Kwamba mkaweze kutambua uwepo wa Mungu. And later we might, you know, I, I don't know how the time is, but later that I'll lead you to practice praying for each other. Sasa atawaongoza kwa ajili ya kufuafundisha jitu Jenzi watu wanaweza kuombea watu wengine. So the first is to pray for you to experience the Holy Spirit. Jambo la kwanza ni kuwaombea kwamba mkaweze kuhisi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. I hope you hunger for God. Najua kwamba mnatamaniyo kwa Mungu. And open your heart to God. Uofungue moyo wako kwa ajili ya Mungu. Believe that God is loving you. Amini kwamba Mungu anakupenda. And I hope that at all times you believe that God is loving you all the time. Najua kwamba kila wakati unapoamini kwamba Mungu anakupenda kila wakati huo. Christians don't have to live in pain and burdens. Usaidi kuishi katika maswali na katika mizigo. He will help you. Yeye atakusaidia. The reason why we have pain and suffering sababu ambayo tuko na uchungu na mateso is because after Adam sin baada ya Adam kutenda dhambi then everyone suffer. Basi kila mtu yote anapitia katika shida. But when you come to God, Mungu, He'll help you. Yeye atakusaidia. So believe that God is loving you right now. Basi amini kwamba Mungu anakupenda sasa. Every time you pray, kila wakati unapoomba, don't say God where are you? Usiulize Mungu anakuwa wapi? Mungu kila wakati anakuanga juu. But believe that He really wants to bless you. Waamini tu kwamba yeye hakika anataka kubariki. He is seeking you. Yeye anakutafuta. I want to bless you. Anataka kubariki and give you joy and peace. So I hope you come with with faith. Tamani kwamba uje na hiyo imani ya msukumo. Never say God where are you? Usiulize Mungu atako wapi? But say Lord you are blessing me now. Unanema Mungu unanibariki sasa. You are loving me now. Unanipenda sasa Mungu. It's so wonderful. Hallelujah. Asante.